Success means to me that I can do what I really love to do most. Glenn is very soft-spoken, very quiet, and that's uh, a bit disarming when you see the power of some of his uh, paintings. Nature inspires him. He's just, you know, he loves what he sees and, and he just likes to bring that out. When I see him work, I see a man creating a language, a new language between the natural world and the human family. Hello, and welcome to Summit of Life. I'm Randy Taylor. Today we paint a picture of a very talented artist who will transport us to Hollywood, the White House, and the very depths of the ocean floor. Glenn Lotz, arguably North America's most famous wildlife artist, paints pictures that are worth a thousand words. Words that help preserve innumerable plant and animal species threatened by our modern day world. Find out how this artist environmentalist fulfills his dreams, coming up right here on Summit of Life. I believe focus is one of the key ingredients. Passion. I want to use that inspiration in a creative way. I, I really wanted to, to make a difference in the world. Glenn Loach was never really a starving artist living in a garret. He was fortunate enough to have been born with an incredible talent to recreate pictures of living creatures that so many people loved. This enabled him to sell his paintings at a very early age. I think my life in art was uh, chosen for me. It's like uh, I had this feeling that I had this great gift and uh, I had to do something with it. I was about four when I started doing drawings that really looked like something. I started going down to Old Riverdale Zoo with my parents back in those days, and I would sketch the animals in their confined areas, which was uh, very depressing for me because I always thought these things looked so sad and uh, cooped up. So when I drew them, I would uh, try to put them into a setting that was more environmental to the animal. I found that trying to capture something moving was really gratifying. And that stayed with me ever since. I threw in the towel in grade nine, as it were, <laughs> struck out on my own and uh, worked for a commercial art studio for two years. To say that he was absolutely Amazing from the beginning in one sense is silly, but really he was. Uh, he uh, was a child prodigy, uh, always wanted to paint. Glenn is not just a portrait painter of animals. He, he totally understands the animals uh, in every aspect, their musculature, their, their bone structure. He doesn't need to see a, a sparrow, for example, in order to be able to draw it with incredible uh, expertise. The staff at the Royal Ontario Museum allowed Glenn to borrow the skins or carcasses of birds and small mammals for his own reference purposes. He was able to study these creatures in detail and learn to draw with great precision and accuracy, perfectly replicating the true nature of the creatures he saw. This became the hallmark of Glenn's work. They were so impressed with what I was doing that they wanted to help me out as much as they could and they were wonderful at critiquing my work criticizing it and telling me how to improve things. And, uh, because back in those days, there was no school you could go to. There was no school in, in uh, uh, animal anatomy. Uh, there was the Ontario College of Art, which I tried to apply for, but I didn't have enough education to get in. And the principal there at the time, Sid Watson, said that uh, they couldn't really teach me anything I hadn't already taught myself anyway. After I had left the commercial art studio, I decided to paint animal life full time. From there on, it was word of mouth really, meaning that I was able to get different commissions to do for different calendar companies and so on. And then in 1965, I had a show at the Royal Ontario Museum, and that was a major launch for me. 
because from the show I had there, I was able to do a portfolio of songbirds for the Star Weekly. And from that weekend on, that was the December 1965, I was known mostly locally for my work. And then suddenly I was a national figure just overnight. And it just took me by, by surprise. Like I wasn't really prepared for what it was about to happen. And then I, I was receiving calls from television people and radio people and wanting to interview me and when, uh, when you're going to do the next portfolio. And, uh, it was so exciting that uh, I could hardly wait to, to do the next portfolio, actually. The first painting I sold was to a young lad at school in grade eight and uh, it was a drawing of a crow. And I think I got a dollar fifty for it. But it was fun. I mean, it was a start. <laughs> I was able to do commissions for people who were becoming more interested in my career and my art, and they would be paying, you know, $2,000, $1,500, depending on how big the piece was. And then it just sort of exploded from there, catapulted, really. And I became uh, more famous, along with the fact that with the fame comes the sales, really. That's how, that's how it happens. People think of him as just a wildlife artist, and I think of him as an artist of almost everything. He has the, the finest detail I have ever seen. He can, you know, it's really amazing. You can, you can look at a picture for hours and always be finding something new that you never saw before. And, uh, and to see him do it is, it's like nothing else. You know, he's so fast, but he's so accurate. You think that, you know, he's moving so quickly, you'd think that he'd sort of go out of the line, so to speak, but uh, he never does. He's inspired by by um, the fresh plants that come through the snow and the change of seasons. So I think that that's what I really enjoy about Glenn is that he's very tuned into the natural world and um, I don't know, an honest, sincere kind of appreciation for nature. An artist has that gift to see the essence of what it is, these people the layman see, but to retain it in the sense that they can capture that moment and then allow millions and millions of people all over the world to experience that personal expression that they uh, can interpret through their own works. And that is really, I think, what art's all about. Glenn's fame spread, and his work was critically acclaimed for showings in galleries and museums across Canada, U.S., and Europe. He achieved instant bestseller success for his books, and today his paintings hang in public and private collections all over the world, demanding rather high prices. I've been very fortunate over the years to make a very good living doing what I do, but I know that uh, the art is, the art field is uh, shunned on in some respects because it's a very difficult way to make a living. And most artists struggle along and uh, I've been fortunate that my work has uh, clicked with people and it's uh, become very popular. Glenn's modesty and soft-spoken manner belie the fact that his paintings have been revered by many legions of fans all across the globe including past presidents, prime ministers, and even rock stars. His artwork has always struck me as uh, amazing, fabulous. Uh, and I knew of his bald eagle hanging in the Oval Office and, and how prestigious it was for a Canadian artist to, to have that. 
Glenn knew he had finally arrived when his paintings were exhibited at the Peterson Gallery in Hollywood, where he found out a very, very famous musician was a huge fan and had been an admirer of his work for many years. I met, uh, met Mick Jagger. He came into the gallery one day, and that was very interesting. He was all dressed in purple. Uh, uh, he, he was really a nice guy. I, I thought he was amazing, actually. You'd never know that he was the type of uh, character that you see in, in the uh, concerts that he gives, you know. He, he was very laid back and, and he was just really funny and uh, wonderful to meet. He was just commenting generally on the kind of art that was in the gallery. It was all animal art and, and uh, it, it appealed to him. Today my paintings sell for between 15,000, 20,000, up to 120,000, depending on the size of the picture. Glenn's creative gift suddenly took him in a new direction as he explored the last frontier of our planet, the deep ocean, and painted a whole new picture of the animal kingdom. Glenn is a wonderful recorder of things that he sees. He's got marvelous insight into shapes and colors and his attention to detail is so exquisite. And that, of course, led to getting Glenn down in a submarine where he could see the creatures in their natural environment. And, and that created in him a sensitivity that you cannot get as a surface artist. If you're going to paint the interior of the ocean and the creatures that dwell there, you have to spend time underwater. I feel now I've gone in a direction that is completely new in the field of art, which is uh, the painting of uh, deep sea animals. And where I can say I was the first artist to ever go down in 1987 to almost two miles in submersibles to see these animals and uh, to be able to paint them, having seen them firsthand. Uh, and it's, it's awe-inspiring, it really is. It's another chapter in in the continuing uh, beautiful field of, of uh, the animal kingdom. Glenn's creative expression relies on the beauty of nature and his inspiration is derived from the animal and plant life he observes. Stay with us as we see how Glenn Lotz dedicates his life to ensuring it continues right here on Summit of Life. Not content to merely paint nature, Glenn's driving ambition is to preserve it for future generations to enjoy. His activist sensibilities extend to donating his time and original artwork to numerous environmental causes. He's always enjoyed nature, and uh, that's really his home away from home. So he wants to put whatever effort he can, whatever he could do, into, into preserving that. Uh, for instance, the World Wildlife Fund, uh, I've donated originals to them, limited edition prints, and uh, these things all go to raise funds in order for them to continue the good work that they're doing, to preserve what we still have left in the environment to, uh, for future generations, really. He has spoken on behalf of different organizations to advocate for them. One of the most recent ones being the uh, Oak Ridges Moraine, because he's very concerned about that. And we do live on the Oak Ridges Moraine, so while we're one of the lucky ones living here, he's also very aware of the importance of it. I feel very gratified that so many people love my kind of art. It's a field that uh, really gives back and uh, people who may have never seen a grizzly bear or who may have never seen uh, Canada lynx for instance can view a, a painting I've done and feel that to the best of my ability I tried to interpret that animal to the point where they could have said yeah this is what I would have liked to see if I'd been up there and I had a chance to see the Canada lynx and um, 
and because of my contribution to the field of, of nature and being able to do these things the way I do them, I, I feel very gratified about that. My inspiration is the out of doors. That's my real studio, you know. The place where I execute my, my art is really the end result of being out in a studio, which is really the outdoors for me. And um, the inspiration is all around me. That's it. It's a gift that I feel very blessed to have. And it's a situation where I think you have to love it so much that uh, you just give it your all. The end results are in the paintings themselves. And I think you can see it all when you look at one of my pieces. All the love, the, the challenge, the excitement, the, the lifelike look it has, and uh, the ability to be, even be able to do something like that astounds me. And I don't know how I can do it. That's the other thing that I find just as astonishing as a layman, I guess, someone looking at my pieces. Um, I know I'm very gifted and I know I can do it, but I don't know how I do it. When we come back, we'll find out how Glenn has driven himself to change directions yet again and follow his dreams of becoming part of the film industry. Glenn's artistic talent, along with his tremendous drive and ambition, brought him to this new path in life, into the movie business. His accuracy and attention to detail have enabled him to produce brilliant artwork that comes to life on the big screen just as well. Welcome aboard the Kraken, everyone. I'm your pilot, Wally Fisher. Today I've we'll done this film with the Cemex and Iwerks Productions, and they used a lot of my drawings of the deep sea fishes to help them with the exactness of what they were trying to do in their computer-generated animation. Here's that squid cloud the Hydra mentioned. All stop! Reverse thrusters! That was a really big squid. Uh, before we met him, we had already used a ton of his material for inspiration. And we met him actually through our giant squid expert, Clyde Roper, who was a mutual friend of, of Glenn's and he introduced us. Glenn came down to see what we were doing and uh, you know, has, he'd always dreamed about uh, seeing a giant squid and painting giant squids and seeing them come to life. So it was, uh, it was a great opportunity for him. Glenn's attention to detail is basically second to none and his accuracy and his desire to be accurate. I know he was the only, or the, certainly the first uh, artist to go down in a submersible and to actually see some of the creatures we're depicting in our show firsthand with his own eyes. And he was able to, to do pallets right there at 500 feet, 1,000 feet down. And so he brought all that experience with him to our show and, and really helped a lot with our color schemes and the way we would put our creatures into the environment and make it look as believable as possible. I think that uh, him working on these movies is, uh, is really a neat thing. You know, he's, he's a huge movie buff, and he's always enjoyed movies. And I think for him, working on, uh, on any type of film is just something that he's always wanted to do. And uh, being able to do that now, it's just a, really a great opportunity for him, because he's, it's just always, it's a, it's a sort of a, a, a love of his life. Uh, the movie I'm working on, uh, the working title right now is called Deep Dive, and it's uh, involving the derelict Nautilus found about uh, almost two miles down off Bermuda in a cave. And it's what they find inside the Nautilus that, that really starts the story going. He's done something again that a camera cannot do. He's created relationships with ships and subs and underwater stations that uh, 
this, that cannot exist without his imagination, without his creativity. I've been doing a lot of the artwork for this production, what they call storyboards, and uh, that what, what they are are just little drawings in the form of sketches that flow right through to the conclusion of the story. And uh, I'm working on set designs and some of the creatures that uh, will be seen. I had to redesign the Nautilus, and that was very exciting to do. He can be walking uh, through a simple trail, whether it's in a park in the city or whether it's a, a park up north, uh, and see paintings wherever he goes. It's really a question of what he chooses to paint, what is interesting. What is interesting for him to paint, not what is interesting for the market. Glenn doesn't really give that much of a hoot about the market. He's a true artist. He gets us to see things differently. He inspires us to look in three dimensions and spend time, uh, which we don't often do. So Glenn has taught me a lot. He's made me think differently about, you know, this natural world that we live in and how important it is. I don't want to go as far as to say it's almost like being God, like you're creating something so exciting, so uh, different because it's a God-given gift to begin with, as far as I'm concerned. But it's something that is very personal and very challenging. It's like magic. Glenn's beautiful artwork displays an almost deceptive ease and embodies one definition of genius. The ability to do repeatedly and without apparent effort what other people cannot do at all. Glenn Loach certainly has achieved success with his incredible gift. If you know anyone with an incredible story to tell, we'd love to hear about it. Drop us a line through our website at summitoflife.com. Until next time, I'm Randy Taylor. Thanks for watching and be well.